levels will climb very rapidly. That is uh, a lethal situation, actually. And, and it, you can die from what can happen with that uh, chronically elevated glucose because of what's going on at the kidneys. And so insulin comes in from the pancreas into the blood to save the day. It basically opens doors in certain cells throughout the body, like muscle and fat cells, for that glucose to come from the blood into those cells, thereby lowering glucose, and then insulin having done its job, retreats back into the background. That fails to um, highlight the fact that insulin has an effect on literally every single cell in the body. Every cell in the body has little doors that insulin can come and knock on and thus tell the cell to do something. The theme of what insulin does, if we tried to distill all of its thousands of chemical reactions to one central idea is insulin tells cells what to do with energy. Um, some cells, it tells it to take in energy like the muscle and the fat cells, but every other cell, uh, it still tells the cell what to do with the energy that it has, what to do with amino acids and glucose and fats and ketones and lactate. It, it dictates energy use at every cell and thus um, by extension, it dictates energy use in the entire body. The average individual is coming to their physician visit once a year, and at every single visit, they will get their glucose numbers and then a bunch of lipid numbers, LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, and triglycerides, and that'll, that'll almost be the end of it. Unfortunately, at no point has the word insulin ever entered into this conversation with, between patient and clinician, but the, the tragedy there is that someone could be coming into these doctor appointments year after year over decades and the glucose is always normal. And so the physician or the clinic is never thinking that there is any hint of a metabolic problem. But in reality, insulin has been climbing steadily throughout every year at every visit. It's just evidence of the person's mounting insulin resistance. They have several times more insulin than they did it's not working as well in controlling glucose, but they have so much that it works well enough and the glucose is staying in check. And it's only once the body has reached this, if you will, maximal point of insulin resistance, now the glucose starts to climb. And then we detect the problem with conventional thinking because we look at everything through the lens of glucose. So Someone could be coming to the doctor and their glucose numbers, numbers may look normal, but they're gaining a little weight or let's say that their blood pressure is climbing and blood pressure is one of the most common consequences of hypertension, or it's a man and he's worried about erectile dysfunction, or the woman is worried about polycystic ovary syndrome, the most common forms of infertility. And those are both very intimately derived from insulin resistance. So their glucose is normal. The physician says, well, you're not really on the spectrum of type 2 diabetes. But if, they, if we were to pause that conversation and look at insulin, then we would say, oh, my heavens, your, your insulin is five times higher than it ought to be. Um, that's, mm -hmm. that's a red flag. If someone had immediate access to their blood lipids or their conventional um, clinical blood measurements, Glucose won't tell you too much. I would say look at your triglyceride to HDL ratio. Take your triglyceride number, divide it by your HDL cholesterol number. And if that number, if that, that, that um, answer is less than 1.5, that's a very good sign that the person is insulin sensitive and they're, and they're doing well and they have a low risk of heart disease. <clears throat> What will very, very, very often happen, triglycerides will plummet, HDL will go up. Those are two very, very good changes by, by any definition, even dogmatic conventional thinking would say that's a good change. What may happen in some is LDL will stay or go up. And that will, be, that will commonly be flagged um, because, because conventional thinking looks at LDL as this um, evil that by, by all means must be expunged and must be pushed down to as low a number as possible. And that is absolutely not true. LDL alone has almost no predictive value when it comes to understanding someone's heart disease risk. And in contrast, there is exceedingly clear evidence that people, as we get older, people with the lowest cholesterol levels uh, die sooner. And then the converse, people with the highest cholesterol live longer. The lower, especially LDL levels, 
Um, it increases people's risk of dying from infections by like 15 times. That's a phenomenal increase in risk of, of serious infections, as well as blood-based cancers like leukemia and lymphoma. So LDL is an extraordinarily protective molecule. It's, it's very much a part of the immune system that's very overlooked, unfortunately. And I'm not saying LDL has no relevance to health, but I am saying to look at LDL alone simply gives you almost no real value. If, if someone is adopting a low carbohydrate diet and they really wanna get a feel for their, what their blood lipids can tell them, look at the triglyceride to HDL ratio and I guarantee it will start to go down with the adoption of a low carb diet. As insulin comes down, those blood lipids get better.